it's already very interesting. We're barely a minute in. So, as I was saying, <laughs> and I completely forgot. Let's just talk about the picture. <laughs> so, this is the newest character I've created, even though I'll probably create billions more because, dear lord. This character is going to be in a My Hero Academia D&D &D that one of my friends is planning. And her name is Celeste, because I was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if I named a, you know, character with ice powers Celeste. You know, like, Sun, you know. I think I'm clever. <laughs> I didn't actually mean for it to become her name, but I didn't think of anything else. So if you have an idea, please tell me, because I... <laughs> Otherwise, I'm on baby naming sites, and it's like, I'm not pregnant, I swear. <laughs> I'm just an artist with many characters that I need to name. Also, last time I recorded this, it was snowing like crazy. It's October when I'm recording this. <laughs> what even? What's happening? My tree and in the backyard fell down because of the wind speeds. That's fun. How's your day going? But anyway, this character, Celeste, she has ice powers. Uh, in My Hero Academia, if you don't know, they call their powers quirks, so that's what I'm going to refer to her power as from now on. It's going to be her quirk. Her quirk, uh, I have named it Frostbite, because... You'll see when I finally get to coloring her skin, her skin is like an icy blue. She is absolutely frigid. Hi, Susie. One of my other kids. I know that already. Just coming to say hi. Uh, she is absolutely frigid. Her internal body temperature is around 40 degrees, so her blood can still move. It's just like slush, though. It just. It's kind of concerning. But since it is her quirk, she's able to handle it. However, if she overuses like a really strong attack, that internal temperature is going to keep dropping, and that's kind of a bad thing. And people can't like hold on to her skin or anything. Like you know, you can't hold hands with her or anything because she will actually freeze you. Um, her parents. Most of the time, quirks. Are like a combination of your parents quirks and stuff like that so like at least one of her parents is able to you know like hug her and all that jazz without any concern for being hurt because that would make for a really sad backstory and that's not what i wanted to take this character's direction and i want her to be a really peppy happy person in contrast to all my edgy characters <laughs> nix <laughs> tanya <laughs> Luca, <laughs> I'm remembering. I'm like the edge master. Hi, hi, Susie. How are you doing? My cat is demanding attention. So, in this first picture here, you can see she's about to absolutely fuck someone up. But in the last picture, she's actually just like, no, don't step on that. <laughs> she's um, like just. Oh hey, kind of thing, and oh my god, you'll see, you'll see in the final, final pose. I spent almost an hour drawing her braid. It was like two in the morning. The things you do for drawing. But this picture took me about eight hours to draw in total, and I love how it turned out. I, you know, <sighs> I like it. Uh, she's wearing, like, kind of a sheer thing on our, her hero costume, because they're, they're training to become heroes, superheroes in this world. What? My cat is so needy. Um, so she has kind of, like, a sheer thing covering most of her body, because she is in high school, so I didn't want it to be, like, yeah, because it's most effective for her quirk, she's just in, like, a bra in shorts, so, like, she has a sheer covering over some of her body. Because otherwise it would be like, that is a high school student. Please no. 
So, like, I changed it so her top isn't just a bra or anything, and she's she's wearing a bit more. But, like, for her quirk to be most effective, Frostbite needs more surface area so that if she can get, like, start, like, just poking someone would be effective. But the more surface area she can, you know, get on someone the more she can freeze them at once. She's very good for capturing. She can't really make ice on her own, unlike Todoroki, which is just like, whoop, there it goes. She can make a very small amount, but it's not something where she can make mountains of ice. She's more a ice manipulator. Like, think of waterbenders from Avatar, um, but just ice. Like, she can't move around water freely, but she can make water into ice and then move that freely. So like, uh, oh god, what's his name? Toshiro from Bleach? Like that. Toshiro Hitsugaya, yeah. I'm a weeb, god damn it. <laughs> oh god, what am I can't do? Alright, whatever. We're gonna worry about that later. Maybe? Is it still recording? Alright, yeah, I guess my recording's fine. It was just Premiere being weird. Which was, like, the entirety of this video, actually. So. Yeah, like I was saying, I didn't want her to be, like, super exposed because she still is in high school, and that's not really chill by me, so... I gave her a sheer covering, and in her normal clothing, since she doesn't want to hurt anybody with her powers, she covers up a lot. She's wearing pants, like a full coat, she's got her hair tied back and everything. Boots. I don't think I, I, I didn't give her gloves in her casual, but, you know, she, she has gloves. Clearly. So. Yeah. I think that's, uh, that's all I'm going to say about the character at the moment, because the D&D hasn't started or anything, but it is, um, it's pretty cool. Onward to the topic of today, which is school stories, as I flip over my post-it notes. I, I have a couple of stories. I'm not going to get into, like, how high school worked for me, because I moved around a lot in high school, and I tried recording it with that, but it, it actually exceeded the 33 minutes that I have on screen right now. So I'm not going to get into that at the moment. Uh, if you're interested in hearing how high school worked with how I moved all the time, let me know. I have more stuff recorded, and I could easily get that out. I see easily, but it's <laughs> recording takes a lot. So, I could probably actually get that out by the end of the month. I think I have enough recorded footage for it. Yeah, I'll probably do that. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about some of the things I saw at high school. And for the sake of simplicity, and the fact that I don't want to be sued by giving actual names to these high schools, we're going to call them Mustang, High School Musical, and El Tigre. No, we're not going to go El Tigre, god no. I don't know if anyone actually remembers that. I don't think Tony the Tiger is actually any better. You know, we're already calling one one of the school's high school musical. We're gonna go with uh, El Tigre. So, mm, I think I'm going to end with my Huey story. Because I wore Huey's to school, but we're gonna get into that later. Let's start with the basic thing. Fights. Hell yeah. <laughs> At Mustangs, there, there was fights constantly. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I know schools that have had a lot more fights than Mustangs did. Just because I have friends all over, I guess. But I saw 
three fights while I was at Mustangs, and I was only there for like a year-ish. I wouldn't really count that I was actually there in sophomore year, because I was barely in attendance, but for the next time, right? So, at Mustangs, you know, you had your basic fights, it was like, oh, some people hit other people. I remember the most dramatic fight that I actually saw was <laughs> when two guys started they stood up. I was I was in the middle of lunch at the time. We were in the middle of lunch in the cafeteria. They were over by the doors leading out into the hallway. And I was over uh, off to the side a little bit. I had a decent bit of distance between us eating my eating my, you know, taco salad thing bowl, whatever you want to call it, with headphones in. So I don't know how this, how the argument started, but apparently it was over a girl. I found out later. Of course. God. <sighs> so, unimportant to the story. Anyway, these two guys, they stand up. It's like really loud, so I, I look over, and I'm like, oh boy. They start swinging at each other. They get good hits in. One of them reaches behind, grabs a chair, and smashes it on the other guy. We had security guards walking the school at um at Mustangs. So the security guard sees this, starts running over. The uh, lunch lady, or not lunch lady, lunch monitor, sees this and starts running over. These guys end up punching the lunch monitor, which is a teacher, and the police officer trying to break up the fight, and they start going... They keep going into the hallway. I'm like, holy shit, how fucking stupid. And they both got suspended. But I was like, alright. And of course, it was the talk of the day. I went over into my swim peer, uh, swimming class for gym. And, you know, everyone was like, oh, did she hear about the fight? And I was like, yeah, I was right there. <laughs> you know? And it gave all those juicy details to other people at the school during swim swim class. So that one ah oh, that wasn't even the most escalated fight. I mean, clearly punching a security guard and a teacher while also bashing bashing another kid over the head with a chair is not very good. But it wasn't the worst fight. Let's move over to High School Musical. There was another another fight. I'm going to make a note right here. Uh, I started drawing before I started recording, so I, I got a little bit of line art done before I actually started recording the second piece. So I was like, oh, wait. But, anyway. So, at High School Musical, uh, I knew a kid. I met quite a few interesting characters in my day. I am not going to lie. And it was it was the dumbest reason for this, but someone was sitting in this guy's chair. Uh, we'll call him Pancakes. Pancakes, uh, it was like his chair, you know, where you sit there every day, but there's no actual assigned seats. And he flipped his shit when another guy was sitting there and he wouldn't move. He was like, no, I'm sitting here. And everyone was like, yo, dude, it's his seat. But Pancakes fucking flipped his shit. And uh, started strangling the other guy. And he had to go to the hospital. And I was like, hmm. Well then. You know, it's not every day that people get sent to the hospital in the middle of class. But it's like, alright. You know, clearly people were trying to break up this thing here. And they got Pancakes off the other guy. But I was like... Okay. Well, this happened. Okay. It was it was days before his graduation, and I think they weren't going to let him graduate and expel him, because obviously that's a very serious fight, and it's assault. He was an adult. But I don't know what happened, but they did let him graduate. But they did not let him walk. I remember some people were like, why did they even let him graduate? But it, I don't 
I don't know the circumstances of why he was able to graduate, because that was a very serious thing. So yeah, that I would say those two are like the most memorable fights that I saw. Of course, there was always a couple more, and even at um, El Tigre, there was other fights, but you know, none, none were as impactful of as you know, decking police officers and sending sending kids to the hospital days before graduation. Oh boy. Alright, I'm looking at the time here, and I think I have time for Heelys, but not the walkout. Hmm. I might make the walkout its own separate video because I think it's really important. So let's talk about some Heelys, hmm? Do people remember Heelys? I really hope you do, because they were great. They were awesome. Um, I've had Heelys forever. Like, my entire life I've had Heelys. Oh boy, what time do I work? Okay. My entire life I've had Heelys. You know, I got, I got my first pair and I started wheeling around everywhere. Not the best for actual, like street pavement or sidewalks because they have grooves but you know if you got on hardwood or tile man you could glide for miles and that's exactly what I did so I've had a pair of Heelys since sixth grade and they are a little tight I will admit but I love them and I would plan out my days like with gym class so that I wouldn't have to bring another pair of shoes for gym class because I didn't have enough room in my backpack for that and I didn't feel like just bringing around other shoes, because I would forget them. And it's happened. So, when I wore my Heelys to school, it was an all-day event. Like, we wouldn't be doing anything in gym class, or... Uh, I think I was in weight training most of the year, so... It was, just, like, days where I knew I would be lifting, and I wouldn't have to use my feet. Like, arm day, you know? So... I had been wearing my Heelys for months. Kids started recognizing me at El Tigre. Uh, I couldn't really wear them at High School Musical because most of the school was carpeted, actually. It was really weird. And at... At, um... Mustangs. I just never really had a good opportunity to use them because the hallways are, were much more crowded. It was a much bigger school with a, m like, you could not walk side by side in that school. But El Tigre was a much smaller school, like, maybe half the size of Mustangs. Now, eh, half the size of High School Musical, not quite that small for, um, Mustangs. Mustangs had about 3,500 kids. High School Musical had about 4,000, and then El Tigre had about 2,200. So, it was a sizable difference. And since there was a lot less people over in El Tigre, the hallways were a lot less dense and you could get around much easier, so I wasn't as concerned as running into people, especially since... I'm wearing Heelys, I can get places much faster. Like, there was one time I forgot stuff that I needed in one of my classrooms from the period before. I asked my teacher, I was like, hey, can I go run and grab this? She was like, think you can make it in a minute? And I was like, yes. And I wheeled red, like, people saw me. I was being very careful. I should mind you, I was being extremely careful. And people saw, like, I'm not kidding. People knew me because I wore Heelys. Also, I have very brightly colored hair, so that probably helped, too. <laughs> um, I think my hair would have been purple or something at this time. Ooh, or the fire tips. I think it was the fire tips, actually. So, I had been wearing my shoes for months. Teachers knew about the shoes. They loved them. My physics teacher was like, oh, I should really use those for some of my demos. And I was like, yes, you should. They're great. Like, I am 100% on the Healy train. 
uh, my sister was asking for Heelys for Christmas. Uh, my other friend wants Heelys still. But Heelys are, like, expensive. I mean, clearly not as expensive as, like, some of those name, name brand shoes, like Jordans or some something like that. But they can be $70 easily, which is oof. But, so one day, I was in a completely empty hallway. It was the main hall. Completely empty. The bell had just rung. And there was no one in there yet, because it wasn't late enough in the day that it was, you know, lunch periods and there was people coming in from the side or anything. It was completely empty. And a dean saw me. I've passed deans before. They haven't said shit. But I don't know what crawled up this man's butt this day, because he, he pulled me aside and he was like, you can't, you can't wear those. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, you can't wear those in the school. You can't have anything with the wheel in them. Take them out. I was like, I can't take out the wheel. I don't have the tool for it. And you know, if you've ever tried to get a wheel out of a Healy without the tool that it comes with, or even like a flathead screwdriver, you're going to break your fingers. Like, there's no way to get that out unless some sort of fucking magician. And I am clearly not. <laughs> so... He, he made me take off my shoes. I went to second period crying. Because I was... I don't get yelled at a lot. I'm generally a really good egg. I'm sassy as all hell. But, you know, I don't, like, lash back at authority or anything. Like, when he told me to take off my Heelys, I was, like, devastated. Because, like, my favorite shoes... And a dean just yelled at me. Not even my dean or anything. Just a random dean with a pull up his ass because, like, these were <laughs> awesome. I could get to my classes so much faster. I was being careful. There has been no incidents of me running into anybody with these shoes. It's not like he had any, like, merit to actually force me to take them off. Like, there was nothing wrong with me wearing them at the moment. Like, nothing had happened. They weren't against the rules dress code or anything. The school is extremely new, so it's still figuring out stuff, but... They made you sign a contract at the beginning of each semester saying you, you know all the rules because you had a dean talk and everything. Contracts signed by a minor are not legally binding, so it didn't matter anyway. So... Like, there was nothing against me wearing these Heelys, because all the rules were laid out right there. They didn't give you a student handbook or anything. It was all online, but sometimes people don't have access to that. Much less are we going to read it in our spare time at, you know, like, study hall or anything, where it's almost impossible to get a computer. So, it wasn't in the rules that I couldn't wear these shoes, and I... I was so devastated. I had to take off my shoes, though. You know, like, teachers were asking me. They were like, oh, did you break your shoes? I was like, no, a dean told me to take them off. That's nearly the worst part, though. So, it was lunchtime. You know, I'm still upset over what happened, because... I'm... I'm emotional, honestly. <laughs> I was so devastated... And I get into the lunch line, try and get it, try to get my food, you know, just continue on with my day until I can go home and just exist for a little bit, you know. And I step into the lunch line. I still don't have shoes on because I didn't have any other shoes. Like I said, I planned this so I didn't have to bring other shoes with me. And the lunch lady. She's a very nice lady. I don't hold this against her at all. She's just doing her job. But she comes up to me and she's like, Hey, I need you to step out of line. Like, she's not making a big deal out of it or anything. Very kind, very sweet lady. She's like, I can't serve you without shoes on. I'm like, but Dean said I would get a detention if I put them on. Detention at this school was much different than detentions at my other two schools because... It was so boring, oh my god. It was over an hour long for 
at a normal tension. And, oh my god, you couldn't put your head down, you couldn't, you couldn't have the earbuds in, you couldn't use the computer to work on stuff unless you had a pass from a teacher, which people rarely did because they actually needed a reason to let you be on the computer. So most of the time I just read in detention, and I don't want to have that long of an attention span to read for over an hour at a time. Like, it, when I read, I put on, like, background music, something, like, entirely instrumental so that I can actually read. But there's got to be something else going on, otherwise it's just not going to work for me. Same thing with homework. But that doesn't matter, because fuck you. The school doesn't care. So... I was super upset. I was just told, I can't get lunch without putting on the shoes that'll give me a detention. And of course, this dean is the lunch monitor for this for this period. So I couldn't put the shoes back on, otherwise I would get a detention. But I couldn't get food either, because I didn't have shoes on. So I go back to where my friend is waiting. Because we... My friend. My boy. Awesome. But my friend was so helpful like, offered to go get me lunch and stuff, but, like, I had, uh, free lunch because of financial situations, so my friend was, like, willing to pay for lunch, and I was like, no, 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 don't worry about it, I, I was one of the lunch monitors, a different one, not the dean, came over, I was like, hey, are you okay, a student leader came up and was like, are you alright? You know, is there anything I can do to help? I was so overwhelmed with the kindness of this school. Not from the teacher, not from, like, the deans or anything. No, they didn't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, a lot of the other students were actually very nice. There was quite a few that I did not care for, but that's a different video on its own. And I was, I was just like, I just want to go home. I, you know, I didn't, we weren't supposed to have our phones out at all during the day, otherwise we would get a detention. Man, the school sounds great, doesn't it? El Tigre is fucking great. Um, but I, I told like the lunch monitor, I'm gonna pull out my phone so I can text my mom and see if I can go home. Is that okay? She was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's all right. Go for it. You know, um, I'll, I'll make sure no one gives you a detention. You know, she's just trying to go home. I was like, Okay, cool. Thanks. And I'm still crying because I didn't have the best morning before I went into the school in general. Like I was already very on edge before the dean told me to take off my shoes. So. And just everything. I was I was so done with, with that day. I texted my mom. She came to pick me up. And I was like... I hate this school sometimes. And she was like, yeah, I know. But we went home. And that was the end of that. I, You know, kids asked me. were like, in, in the hallway during the day, they were like, wait, are you the Healy's kid? And I was like, I guess... Because I had my Heelys in my hands. Like I said, my backpack didn't have enough room for me to fit a pair of shoes in. So. Uh, I'll take you raise a piece of work. I'll tell you. I don't think anyone ever corrected the dean on, on what happened. For some reason, the school had the weirdest things banned. They never mentioned Heelys, though, in their dean talks. So, for all I knew, I could still wear my Heelys, but I knew that dean was out there. I think I did wear my Heelys again, anyway, last year. In my senior year, because just... I was like, fuck it. I'm wearing Heelys. I was much smarter about when I Heelied, though, because... Obviously, the big open hallway didn't do me any favors when the uh, when the dean came by. So, like, it was only in classrooms where I knew teachers would be chill with it and stuff like that. But they could not kill the Healy's master. So that's my Healy story. I'm gonna mark it off that I told 
Healy's and fights, because I have quite a few stories from school. But I am grateful that I went to all three schools. I think each of them had things to offer me, even if it was upsetting at times. But I'm very grateful for the friends that I made at El Tigre. Like I said, these some of these kids were like the nicest people I've met. And I'm very grateful to have gone there and to learn things from there. Would I like to go back there ever? No. <laughs> no, that, that school needs a lot of work before anybody can be like, Oh, this is a fantastic school. Because... Days I've cried. I'm emotional. I, I understand that completely, but... If a school is so unbearable that kids don't want to be there in general... It started at 7 a.m. to the first class was at 7 a.m. No. You, you need to rethink what you're doing there, El Tigre. And hopefully you don't know who I'm talking about, because I think that would be legal trouble, but... Oh well. So, I hope y'all enjoyed some of these school stories. I, I do plan to make a video about the international walkout that we had, because my school was a little weird in how it did it. And then there's also just a story between my mom and the vice principal, because my mom, oh boy, she chewed them out when I tried to move in. And I think I'll just talk about my general high school career overall, because... It was a mess. It was such a mess. I, um... Yeah. I'm gonna write that down real fast. General... That is not how you spell that, oh lord. High school. I'm also writing this in Sharpie on a post-it note, hoping it won't bleed through to every other post-it note I have. So... <laughs> I hope y'all have a wonderful day. I'm going to boop the, um, the full picture that I got for Celeste up here. I hope you enjoy her. I really I like drawing her. That braid took me over an hour, though. Whew! And I, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Yeet!